Good morning. Good morning. Give it unto God who is it. My all in all, the head of my life, and to Bishop Barney K. Harris, that was pastor of this church, for all these ministers and teachers, to Brother Golden, like I always say, to make it look and sound so good. I am Minister Harold, the Sunday School Superintendent. Welcome again to our virtual Sunday School. And God has not told us to come back together again. So until that time, we're going to keep on doing what the Lord telling us to do. We're going to keep on social distances. We're going to keep on washing our hands. And Lord knows we're going to keep on wearing these masks. Because the science has proven that that is one of the best ways to come back this thing. So until then, we're going to keep on bringing the word so we can feed the spiritual bodies until we can come back together physically. Now, I'm going to hide behind that old mountain. Lord, I'm going to hide behind that old mountain. Bless us, Lord. 
strengthen us, Lord, and keep us, Lord. And as we go through this election time, Lord, as we go out and place our votes, let us talk to you, Lord, before we go. Let the choices we make be of your will. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for just allowing us another chance to, to come out this morning, Lord, to praise and uplift your name. Study your word, Lord. Study your word, Lord, so we can tell folks just how good you are. Bless you, Lord. Bless your holy name. Strengthen us, Lord. In Jesus' name we do you pray. Amen. Amen. Again, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another First with Cain Baptist Church Sunday School. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another virtual Sunday school lesson here at Canaan where our pastor is Bishop Ronald K. Harris. We welcome you to join us in on October the 25th is um, today and that we're studying another dynamic lesson. Uh, this lesson is titled God Meets Moses Alone. What a blessing. God Meets Moses Alone. And our lesson text this morning is coming from Exodus the 24th chapter starting at the 12th uh, through the 18th. Our golden text this morning is from Exodus 24th and 17th. I just want to give God glory and give him praise for this day that he has made. Thank you for our cameraman, Brother uh, Golden, that keeps making us shine. And we thank him. Uh, and for our, all of our ministers that's here this morning, our teachers, we give God glory. We're still practicing uh, our social distancing, being obedient to the uh, CDC regulations, but we're here to inspire and uplift, and we welcome you to join in with us today, and prayerfully, we're saying that something's going to be said that may put a spark in your heart, a change in your heart, a change in your mind. Amen. To God be the glory for all things. We give Him praise. Amen. We're going to start with a word of prayer, and then we're going to get started in our lesson. God, we thank you this morning, Lord. We lift you up. We give you praise, Lord. We give you honor. We give you glory, Lord, for this day that you have made, Lord God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for, Lord, we could have been cut off, Lord God, but you saw fit, Lord God. Father God, we lift you up, Lord God, and as we expound on your word, Lord God, Father God, we ask that I decrease, that you may increase, Lord, and that we uh, increase in knowledge, Lord, and uh, understanding, Lord, of your word, Lord God. And if someone don't know you, Lord God, we pray that they have a closer walk with you, Lord God. Yes. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise and we give you honor for this day. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Again, our lesson is coming from Exodus. 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 Amen. And we all need to have some Exodus in our life. Amen. Uh, and again, we're going to start reading uh, from Exodus to 24, starting at the 12th uh, verse through the 18th. Uh, can we all read together? And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me unto the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tablets of stone and the law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of God, and he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here with us, until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. And Moses went up with the mountain, and the cloud covered the mount, and the glory of the Lord abound upon the Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days, and the seventh day it called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud, and just him was unto the mount. And Moses was in the mount for 40 days and 40 nights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spending time with God. And that should be something that we do every day. Spending time with God. And what an honor. Uh, God meets Moses alone. We should all uh, have that desire and yearning to be in the presence of the Lord alone. Just me and you, Lord. Just me and you. 
Again, our golden text is, In the sight of the glory of the Lord was a devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. What a blessing. Amen. And our lesson aimed this morning to see the difference between man's sinful nature and God's glory. We know that there is a difference between man's nature and God's glory. Amen. Uh, the principle to understand how holy God is and how unholy we are. And we all stand in the need of prayer. Amen. We all stand in because truly he's a holy God. Uh, and we have to, to be in his presence, be a holy people, striving for that every day. The application to be thankful that God chooses, he chooses to use believers for his glory. He doesn't force his way in, but he chooses. He presents the opportunity. And we, just like our last week's lesson, it was talking about saying yes when some, when he asked to do it. We so quickly to say yes sometimes, but sometimes we, we seek God's presence, seek his, his answers for the things that we're seeking, and sometimes we say yes, and then we say yes, but our, in our hearts we're saying yes, our, out of our lips we're saying yes, but our mind is far from yeah. uh, that, uh, and being obedient to what the Lord has for us to do. Introducing the lesson, all scriptures is given for mankind to hear and understand the believing heart can receive it and be a blessing by it. Yes, receive it and be a blessing by it. The unconverted heart may distort it or may just plain ignore it. How many times have we heard it? Just plainly ignored it. All right. Do it. Plainly ignored it. Yes, I'm going to do it, but plainly ignored it. Praise God. He teaches us through the sacred records of these miraculous events. Uh, in this, we're going to learn some of the, what the Lord has in store for us today through this lesson. God meets Moses alone. Moses alone. God calls Moses to come to him. God has shown himself in the veil way to Moses and Aaron and Aaron's son, Nadab and Adha and the 70 elders of the people of Israel. He now called Moses to come up on the mountaintop to get a further and deeper revelation of him. God was going to have Moses make stone tablets on which God would write the law. He was going to give Moses a lot more instruction about the place of worship, the priests who would facilitate worship, and the tabernacle and its use. Imagine a private meeting calling you up to be in the presence of the Lord to give you instruction, just me and you, Lord. And so many times we say, yes, Lord, or somebody will ask us to do something, and we'll say yes without fully understanding it. Sometimes we have to seek out before we commit to a lot of things. But if God is calling you and he's directly in that relationship that you're building with him, uh, and he's giving you instructions and we're saying yes and the more you read and study his word and you're going to find the answers and he's going to reveal that to you just as he's doing here with Moses. God begins to speak to Moses. We do not know why God had his glory veiled by a cloud, appear to all of the people for six days, appear to all of the people for uh, six days. He began to speak to Moses. The cloud may have been the means of securing privacy for God and Moses alone. And sometimes it's, it's not for everybody to know. This is a private uh, invitation he, for Moses and giving him instruction. And so that cloud that he had placed around it wasn't for everybody to see. So just for, and sometimes we want to know, we want to get into the know. Well, we call him, so wait, let's pray. Well, what are we praying for? Sometimes you don't need to know. You just need to go in and, and pray. Sometimes it's just that we just need to pray. We don't always have to know what we're praying for. On the seventh day that the cloud was seen on the mountain, the Lord called out to Moses in the midst. This may have 
reminded the people that God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. The fact that God is our creator and underscored throughout all the scriptures. God impresses the people in Moses. We read that the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire. If we have ever seen a fully developed house fire, uh, a prairie fire or a forest fire, we have perhaps a slight glimpse of what they saw. So imagine a house fire, even a devouring fire, and it's so bright, and, and just look at the presence of the glory that was illuminated off of that fire. Can you imagine? Hmm. Hebrew reminds us that our God is a consuming fire. Uh, the believer needs to never fear anything or anyone except God. And not in the fear, when he's saying uh, fear God, not in the way that we fear him, that. Uh, that he's going to do something, but the fear that we will be obedient uh, to him. God, if you recognizes that the Lord is sovereign and can do whatever he pleases, he pleases to spare us from the wrath against sin because of the sacrifice of his son on the cross. Yes, we should fear God because of what he has done for us. Uh, and he loves us just that much. He laid down his life for us and that's the fear that we're talking about the fear that we want to live holy that we want to be obedient to, to him and he is a sovereign god god we do a lot of things and he continues to love us he continue to show us grace and mercy uh, all the time and we so many things that we do that are not pleasing in his sight but he continues to love us otherwise we would still be under the certain uh, dread of the consuming fire of God's wrath. And we find that in 1 John 4 and 18. Moses was there with God for 40 days and 40 nights. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being in the presence of God and what he, how he's instructed us and given us instructions just for him? We have to remember that the Israel were his chosen people and this was a promise that he had made to Abraham uh, Abraham uh, and it was a promise that this Moses was his uh, chosen uh, disciple Can, let's back up I'm sorry you good I'm sorry you good you good, you good. <laughs> just get your thought okay. and just, just start where okay. you need to the covenant God made with Abraham was a renewed with his son Isaac Isaac's son Jacob and uh, Jacob's son, the father. This was a uh, covenant. His this was his covenant people, and the people. This uh, deliverance that Moses was given to the people, Jacob um, to Egyptian, and the four hundred years that his descendants would be slaves. But when Moses came on, and God had made that promise with Abraham, made that promise with Abraham that for four hundred. Some of the uh, commentaries said 400, some of them said 430 years, that this promise had laid dormant because of the sin and the disobedience of the people. And Moses, God now was giving Moses instructions to give to the people. As long as Moses was there, the people were following him. As soon as Moses got out of eyesight, that those 40 days and 40 nights that he, he, he left, they began to do everything, but as long as they kept their eyes and heard or saw Moses, they were doing good. How quickly sometimes we forget, yes, you know, yes. that we keep our eyes on on, on, uh, on the leaders. we looking at the, the man or the, or the woman of God. And even though God has given them instructions, our focus should never be at that man. And if we Blame say we're going to be obedient Amen. to what God has called us and told us to do, even if they're out of sight for that length of time and he was getting instructions to bring back to them that, you know, they wanted to start building those idols again, and that's how they got in trouble in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's where the, the trouble began, you know, after they had been really, uh, set free from Egypt, uh, from Egypt, and they had gone through all the other plagues that God had brought them through and had made it through, and they wandered around for all this time. Now imagine 430 years during this time that God's promise that he had made to the forefathers, which is Abraham, and now it is still his chosen people, and he's given to Moses now instruction for them to follow again.
but with Moses being in the presence of God yeah. and God is giving him those instructions mm -hmm. and now the people are down there and he left Aaron and the elders in charge mm -hmm. of them and so now that they they again they don't see Moses and so they lose their focus and they lose their hope because now they need to now because Moses is not there so we're going to build us something else we're going to make us some, some more idols you know and sometimes you know because we're out of church right now the, the church building that we're out of, but we're not out of church because we are the church. So because we can't physically come to this building, we lose sight and lose our focus because we think that we can't come in here, that we can't worship and give God praise. And sometimes we take our eyes off and get into the word and let the Lord get close to us like he got close to Moses. He brought us up. And how do we get close to God? By reading and studying his word. Yeah. By reading yeah. and studying his word. And this is, he was, uh, the Lord loved us. And through everything that the people of Israel were doing, the chosen people, everything that they were doing, they just got a little sidetracked. And we often get sidetracked. Yeah. We often get sidetracked. But we have to remember where our help comes from and who it's coming from. Yes, thank you. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you. Moses was invited to come near to the Lord and to his very present. What a privilege that was. But it is also an amazing privilege to enjoy today as followers of Christ. Yes. We have that same privilege that we can be followers of Christ and get into a relationship with Christ where we make him our personal savior. Thank you. you know, everything that's going on in this world right now, the pandemic, uh, people are going through uh, financial hardships, uh, going through depression because they're thinking that we're locked out of the building. Amen. We're not locked out of the building. Amen. We may be locked out of the physical building, but the, the church is within us. Um, so the more you grow closer to God and stay connected with your, your church family or families Amen. or friends, you know, Amen. sometimes the negativity that come, comes around because Again, once Moses was out of sight, the people got disconnected physically and then mentally. And so they wanted to start building things. And sometimes we want to get connected. Uh, instead of focusing and reading, we uh, our iPhones, our television, our radios. Uh, and, and now that, you know, since there's some distance in for us, you know, shopping, uh, that may have deterred somebody. So now we're online shopping. Uh, you know, we, we've just turn it in another way instead of focusing our real focus is on the Lord and telling somebody else about the goodness because we're in a the things that we're going through right now mm -hmm. people are being discouraged people are committing suicides yeah. um, the the our young men and young women you know is just gone astray and we are you know a lot of people are being discouraged but we are God's chosen people and we are that beacon light that we should be the light into this world and telling somebody else about the goodness of God oh, and that's what God has given Moses instructions to go back to the children of Israel to say God is you know you said you were going to be obedient to what God had asked you to do you're going to be obedient and you're going to serve him but as soon as he's out of eyesight soon as you know he's not there and even though he gave uh, Aaron and the other elders of the church instructions, mm -hmm. they got a little weak because mm -hmm. they felt like they were being overpowered from the people. Yeah. You know, but God continues to be sovereign. Mm -hmm. He continues mm -hmm. to show love even in our acts of, of resistance. Mm -hmm. Into the mount, Moses along with Aaron and two of his uh, 70 elders in Israel had gone to the mount to meet the Lord and finalize the covenant nation was entering with him. The words in verse 1 and 2 indicate that the group of 74 men did not ascend to the top, uh, uh, to the pathway. The Lord's words, come up to me to the mount and be there. And it was clear that Moses was, would be entering the special presence of the Lord. Be there can be translated wait there. And sometimes the Lord may call us up and he say wait. Mm -hmm. He call us and we get, he say wait. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get a little anxious. Yes. Yes, we get, get, you know, we don't want to be patient. Mm -hmm. We want to say, well, I know he called me and I heard him, but he didn't give you instructions to move just yet. And so that's what he was saying here. Just wait. And sometimes we have to just wait. just wait. 
We have to just wait. Be patient. Be patient. Don't get ahead. Sometimes we want to get ahead. I want to do it my way. The Lord explained exactly what he was going to do while Moses was on the mountain. He was going to give Moses tablets of stone and the law and the commandments that the Lord had written. This is the first mention of the tablets of stone. They are mentioned a number of times in Exodus 32 and 34. These stone tablets were inscribed by God. The stone tablets were inscribed by God with the Ten Commandments. These commandments ineffectively represented the entire covenant was given his chosen people. Moses, Moses certainly had a role in delivering the law to the people of Israel and teaching them. However, God himself was the author of the commands and Israel's divine teacher. Again, if God gives instructions, he has given a command of how he wants the, the laws and the, uh, the, what he wants the people to do. And they need to be obedient to that. And again, sometimes we want to get ahead of things and, and start doing things our way. The Lord's emphasis is instructing the uh, people in his law remain, reminds us that teaching is one of God's primary goals in our lives. Once we are taught the truth and are brought to faith in Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit, God's work focuses on instructing us his way, God's way, not our way, his way. He teaches us that truth that we might be wise and discerning and able to apply it in every situation we encounter in life. If we trust God, if we're leaning and depending on Him, read His Word and study His Word, He will, everything that we do, He will direct our every path. Every way that we go, He will direct our steps. If we lean and depend on Him, Read his word. Read his word. This is our daily bread, is the word of God. This is our daily bread. Uh, we want to always feed, feed the flesh. I'm just talking about we want to feed the flesh, but we need to feed our spirits and our mind with the word of God. The Lord teaches us through his written revelation, the Bible, as faithful teachers expound it, and the Holy Spirit enlightens our minds to understand it. His instruction is not designed to satisfy our curiosity, help us win arguments, or make us look smart. Help us, Jesus. It is given so that we might know him better. Know him better. Know him better. Not to read it and say, well, you know, when somebody comes, we're going to... Uh, Throw a scripture at them just to say, well, I have so many scriptures, you know, because a lot of people memorize scriptures, but they don't have a clue but <laughs> applying them to our lives. Amen. You know, we need to know the word and not to use it for a debate or for an argument. It is given so that we might know him better have a relationship with him, be consistent in what we do, be obedient to him, and to grow to mature in Christ-likeness. Christ-likeness. We often want to say, uh, I have a questionnaire at my job, and we often ask, what is your religion? What is your religion? And a lot of people ponder over that question. A lot of people say, um, I don't know. A lot of people say, I'm Baptist, I'm Methodist, I'm Pentecostal, I'm Jehovah Witness. And a lot of people would say, I am Christian. But that, because the man put that there to say your religion for whatever purpose it is, and, I, and a lot of people ask me, why do you ask, ask me that question? Because I'm not here for that. And I explain that, you know, we're a surgical facility, and if uh, you want to have someone to come in and pray with you or a lot of people because religious purpose won't um, take certain blood items so and I explained that to them uh, but most people you know when you ask we are Christians because we are Christ 
want to be Christ-like. Uh, and we want to, God is, we had accepted him as our personal savior. We are established in a relationship with him. Uh, and we want to do everything that it is to live according to what his word tells us that we should live. A renewed accent. Moses quickly responds to the Lord's summons to reclimb the mountain. In doing so, he took with him his minister, Joshua. The Hebrew word for minister here refers to one who serves. Mm -hmm. We are called to serve. Yes. When we accept Christ as our personal Savior, uh, we become his servants, uh, stewards. Uh, regardless of what role that you play, whatever your leadership role is, whatever capacity uh, that you are, we are here to serve. Uh, and we should never, if someone asks us to do something, or maybe if you just volunteer to do something, you know, to say that that is beneath me. Because we sometimes, uh, because of pride, you know, because of mindset or attitude or whatever, but we are servants. We come to serve. Christ came, and he lived a sinless life uh, here. He did not live a luxurious life. He could have, but because of his love, he laid down his life uh, for us. And we should do that by honoring him and his, for him, because of his love that he shed for us on Calvary's cross. We know nothing about uh, Joshua being, being until Exodus 17, but Moses obviously saw in him the qualities of a good leader, both military, military and otherwise. And sometimes people, you see good qualities in other people, and you want to encourage them and, and bring them out and lift them up. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it just takes an encouraging word or a smile on, on the face to encourage somebody. You know, you may see... Something, just encourage somebody, you may see something in them that they may not see in themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you encourage them, say something, encourage it to encourage and lift them up, uh, that's what we're to do. Let the glory of the Lord uh, shine and share with someone else. At the point Moses is apparently appointed Joshua as a special assistant, as suggested, Joshua had proved to be a faithful to Moses in the past and he would remain faithful to both him and the Lord through the trying period Israel in the wilderness journey. Moses understood the need for human help and encouragement. The Lord provides the word to teach us and the Holy Spirit to empower us. Holy Spirit have your way in my life. Holy Spirit. But he also uh, provides follower believers to help us challenge us, encourage us, and hold us accountable. Hold us accountable. So a lot of times you hear people say, I need an accountability partner. Mm -hmm. When you're working out, sometimes you can start working out by yourself, but sometimes it's good to have a buddy to, to work out with. Or if you, you're starting uh, to do, uh, say you're starting uh, a diet, and, and sometimes you can start by yourself, but sometimes it's good to have somebody else to, to diet with you so you can, somebody can stay here encouraged or you have a new, somebody that have accepted Christ for the, uh, as their personal Savior and you want to encourage uh, them and hold them accountable. Or uh, for as Christians, we don't judge anybody. If you have accepted Christ and I, and I say that I love you, you say that you love me, or you see me and I'm doing something that's not pleasing to God and as uh, a Christians we talk to each other in love and sometimes you need to hold me accountable to be accountable for okay you've accepted Christ and you're doing sister you're doing something that may not be in the will of God so I just want to encourage you uh, to not to lose, lose hope or lose faith so sometimes we do need accountability partners to help encourage and, and lift us up Moses understood the need of humans uh, and encouragement. The Lord provides his word to teach us in the Holy Spirit and power. But we also be believe us to help challenge us. Joshua was uh, accomplished Moses as he started back down the mountain. 
encourage and lifting up. Uh, Moses is doing something here that all of us in leadership should do before a proud leaving a job. Mm -hmm. Train up somebody mm -hmm. before you leave. Amen. It's our responsibility to never leave a position if we have the opportunity to train somebody else. Up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that and that's that's a very important um, statement that you made, uh, Minister Harry. When when you're training somebody, there should be no jealousy. <laughs> you should never think that I can do it all. You should always have somebody in you know yeah. you know to that you can pass the baton to mm -hmm. and not feel like, you know, I got to do it all by myself or that they can't do it any better than me because God deals with each and every one of us and he can equip us but at the same time encourage the young, mm -hmm. some seasonal Christians because we, are, we, we don't know it all. We don't know it all, but we seek God's guidance and his help in everything that we do, yes. in everything. And yes, train up because... Uh, you know, age given, we, you know, oh, you keep living. Yeah. You keep living, you go age, even though you want to tell folks that, you know, you, your birthday was, you know, yesterday, and, you know, you're going to be 25, and we've been 25 for a long time. Some folks, the same. You know, last year you was 25, four years ago you was 25. Okay, but yes, keep living. Yes, so yes. Pass it on and encourage uh, other folks in the ministry and whatever areas of life, and whether it be on the job and somebody's coming in, don't be so, you know, that you can't help somebody uh, along the way. Whatever capacity that you use, do it in a kind and a loving way. Yes, we have to pass that baton on. There were some uh, representatives of the people who had a comp accompanied Moses uh, partway up the mountain early in the, uh, particularly in the uh, ceremonial meal that finalized the covenant God was making with the nation. These men had seen the God of Israel in some form while on the mountain and presumably had been uh, deeply impressed by the experience. The elders would not accomplish Moses on the trip into the mountain. However, he told them to wait at the foot of the mountain for him and Joshua to return. In these instructions, there seemed to be some hint that the leaders and the people were, were they to keep the order of Moses absent. Okay, this would prove to be a different task, difficult task. Instructions, following instructions. And so many times, we don't want to follow instructions. You know, and a lot of times, you know, you open, bought something to put together, um, and the instructions came with the box, but you just looked at the on the outside of the box and said that I can do this without the paper. Mm -hmm. And then you know you put things together and it's not sitting like it's supposed to be, and then you got some leftover materials that should have went in there. Following instructions, <laughs> following instructions, and putting it together. Uh, and we wonder why it don't look like the diagram on the box. We have instructions. Our Bible gives us instructions. But yeah, uh, you know, just, yeah, you, you buy it, it has instructions. There's a purpose that those instructions is put in that box. And every piece that, you know, they label what goes where. Mm -hmm. You know, each item has a number or, or alphabet or something there that goes somewhere. But we decide that we're going to put this together. It looks so easy when we're looking at that picture. Yeah. But instructions are meant to be used. Amen. Are meant to be used. Amen. Delegate leaders. Moses sensed that his time on the mountain would be brief. This... Uh, further instructions to the elders regarding how to handle any problems that arose in his absence. Aaron and her essentially was uh, assumed Moses' duty as judge and final. Okay, Minister uh, Heron is going to be out and he's passing that uh, instructions next week. I'm not going to be here for Sunday school. Um, Minister Steve is going to take over following instructions, passing that instruction. It did not say... Um, when he was talking to Minister Steve, giving him instructions about what to do, it had nothing to say with Miss Lisa or Minister Michelle. 
about anything of the instructions is sometimes we want to get in the way. <laughs> we want to get in the way. We don't want to listen. We, we heard, but that was an instruction. They had to get follow what the leader has said. The choice of Aaron and Herod for these temporary positions is understandable. Aaron had been with Moses' side throughout the events of Egypt and the uh, exodus from the country. Her is appeared in Exodus 17, where he and Aaron are, had supported Moses' arms uh, at the, as he stood overlooking the battlefield where Joshua and the Israelites defeated the Am Amalekites. Another uh, probable fact in the choice of these men was their age. Moses wisely provided instructions for those who would administer Israel's affairs while he was gone. In view of the later events, he would have concluded that some measures of these elders, including Aaron and her, failed. Apparently, they did not fully grasp the wickedness of the people, of uh, their willingness to compromise. How many times someone has asked you to do something, told you to follow instruction, uh, and and somebody just did? They didn't dis They didn't agree. I, I just don't agree. Well, Minister Harry is not here today, and, and uh, Minister Steve, I think we should do it this way. Mm -hmm. I think we, we need to do it. They're not, they're not here. He left and he's been gone and I don't know when he's coming back. Following instructions. Instructions. On the, on the mount, Joshua accomplished Moses to the mountain and apparently only the t on the edge of the cloud, not in two, when Moses later came back down the Mount Sinai. Joshua met him on the way and Moses climbed the mountain and he appeared in the cloud that covered the top of it, the cloud where one described back in Exodus 19.16. It equipped with the glory of the Lord and the brilliant power for display represented the presence of the Lord and his glory and the power of holiness. Tells us the cloud that Lord present abode upon Mount Sinai. The Hebrew word for abode is dwell underscores the idea not the loftiness of but of nearness and closeness. Moses did not enter the cloud immediately. He waited for six days. He waited for six days. Then on the seventh day the Lord called unto him in the midst of the cloud. Only then that Moses actually entered into the cloud drawing near to God's presence. We are not told the reason had Moses to wait uh, to enter the cloud, perhaps it was to remind him the one must not take God holiness lightly. Mm -hmm. Take God holiness lightly. Mm -hmm. Be ye holy for I am holy. Mm -hmm. Hidden from the people to the Israelites encamped in the valley uh, below Mount Sinai, the cloud of the mountaintop was like a devouring fire as if the mountain itself was on fire. The people had been in the cloud in their travels appearing as the cloud by day and the fire by night. Remember coming through the wilderness on their, on their journey uh, out of Egypt and how the Lord provided their provisions, how he provided their, the cloud uh, they had in the morning and at night, how he provided everything that they needed, how quickly did they forget these things. And they understood that the presence of God's special presence with them, they also understood that Moses was not meeting with the Lord and acting as their representative. Moses entered the cloud of God's glory and remained there for the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And sometimes we just need to spend time with the Lord. Whether it doesn't have to necessarily be 40 days or 40 nights. Uh, in the morning, one of the ministers said last uh, Sunday, that spending time with God, it does not matter the time of day when you do that, but you just need to do it. You need to make time. We make time for everything else in our lives. Uh, we make time, but we make excuses when it comes to the Word of God. We make excuses. We often say that I'm going to set aside this time uh, to read. And, if, and you know, we, we send out scriptures every morning to each other, and we read those scriptures. And that one scripture is not to just 
that's just an appetizer for you. Mm -hmm. okay. Just an appetizer to get you started. And once that scripture comes out, you know, and, and, and it gets to stirred up, so that means you have to go and get the main course. Mm -hmm. That's just to get you started. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy that we, we do that with each other. And then if, if you know, one of the sisters send me a scripture, I send a scripture out to somebody, that's something that we can share throughout the day to encourage somebody else with that scripture. Lift somebody else up. But again, we read that one scripture and it wherever it's coming from in the Bible to encourage us, to enlighten us, to start our day off with. And then again, we have to continue to seek and continue to look and continue to read the word and feast off of that and just don't stop there. But when you get that scripture, read that scripture, make sure you share the goodness of God with somebody else. Amen. Moses entering to the cloud of glory reminds us that the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord supernaturally sustained his servant. Being in the presence of God, being in the presence, being in the presence of God, so many times, you, you, that song, my mom used to say, Lord, I look back and I wonder how I made it over. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, how I made it over. I look back and I look to this day and I look back and I still, because I know better now, I knew it was none but the grace of God mm -hmm. that brought me, yes, God. that has kept me, yes, God. and continued to keep me. Yes, and regardless of how, Things may look or things may be going and through everything that's going on in this country right now, we need to lean and depend on God. We need to lean and depend on Him. But we know that God is in control of all things. He is in control of all things. And we continue to give Him praise, give Him glory, and lift Him up. God wants us, we were created for his worship. Yes. Created for his worship. Mm -hmm. And the more you worship him, the more you lift him up, the more you give him glory, the better you feel. Yes. He said, if I be lifted up from yes. the earth, yes. if I be lifted up, not me lift yes. up. Because yes. we want to lift up a lot of people. We want to put a lot of people on pedestals. Uh -huh. You know, but we need to lift up the name of Jesus yes. because he is the only someone that's going to yes. keep us. We have taken Jesus out of everything. Yes. We need to bring him on back. And we confess to be Christians, we confess to be saved, we confess to say that the Lord is the head of my life, uh -huh. but we want to live any kind of way. You can't straddle Amen. the fence. Amen. You can't straddle the fence. As long as the Lord was leading them and Moses was there to see them, the everybody, everything was good. But as soon as the trouble comes, the trouble will come. Yes, it will. Trouble will come. And, and, and we just have to be equipped to know that we're standing on the word. And sometimes you got to stand by yourself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to stand by yourself. But you imagine being in the presence of God and Moses and God is giving him instructions and he's up there. Imagine 40 days and he's feasting with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Feasting with the Lord. We have that same privilege that when we read the word daily, that we can feast with the Lord. Invite him in. Invite him. I have a relationship with him. Have a relationship. That's what we need, a relationship with him. It's a personal thing. It's a spiritual thing. But it's an uplifting thing. Yes. Amen. The Lord supernaturally sustained his servant for Moses, neither ate nor drank during that time. He entered into a lengthy time in fellowship with God, during which God gave him tablets of the law and detailed instruction regarding the uh, tabernacle and the Israel's worship. When God gives us instructions, don't kick it. Don't don't get mad at how, who he brings. And we want to say, well, I ain't going to listen to them because I don't like who it's coming from. But if it's a servant of God, don't don't kick it. Don't knock against it. Because you don't know who God chosen people are. You don't know. And, and you know, sometimes they often say you may be in, uh, entertained and angels unaware. Yes. Uh, God has given somebody a word, and you're saying that I don't want to. I don't want to hear because who is coming from? Be careful. Amen. Be very careful uh, of God's chosen people, and we're all chosen. God don't force anything on us. It's a choice that we make uh, to accept Him as our personal Savior, to accept Him. And again, the promises that He has made down through the years, we are standing on those promises right now. Amen. We are standing on those promises. And if you continue to read the word and study the word of God, God will not be slack according to those promises. None. He just asks that you trust in him, believe him, accept him as your personal savior. 
You done tried everything else. And it, it tried everything else. If you have tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. I promise you, he won't let you down. Is every day going to be a good day? No. No. But he's promised to sustain you through all of it. Our practical points. Christian leaders should spend time alone with God in prayer and study. How are you going to build a relationship if you don't spend time? That's any type of relationship, whether it be a family relationship, whether it be a friend relationship, any type of relationship, unless you spend time. You want to get to know your friend, you want your friend to get to know you, your, your marriage, you want your marriage to get better, spend some time with the Word. Spend some time with the Lord, building that relationship with God. You want the things on the job to go, go well, spend some time with God. You ain't got to tell, I ain't got to tell nobody in this room, uh, talk to Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, won't he work it out? Mm -hmm. A godly, prayerful support team is vital to the success of a Christian ministry. Mm -hmm. You need some folks that going to stand with you. Yes. You need some folks that going to pray with you. Mm -hmm. You need some folks that know how to get a word through. Mm -hmm. You need some, some folks that ain't going to... We gonna talk to God about it. You call me up. Call me up. We talking to God. Amen. We gonna tell God all about mm -hmm. it. Let's get a relationship with Him. Find some folks that know the Word. Find some people that know how to pray. Yes. Christian leaders should learn to delegate duties so that they can extend the reach of their ministry. Minister Heron, you were just talking about that. Mm -hmm. You was just saying that that's what Moses had here for Joshua. Moses Moses was getting up in age. And he was getting older, and, and we got to train up some, train up the children, train up some young folks, some young adults, some, train them up. You got to train them from the womb up. Mm -hmm. You can't start, you know, when they get, now I want to say two and three, because some two and three-year-olds don't have to operate the cell phones. Mm -hmm. You know, they can dial out and call and, you know, plug in some things that we can't. Uh, and, you know, when they get to be um, four and five, they really, you know, calling, praise God. But we need to train them in the Word of God. They can, they can, you know, if you turn on some music, they can dance and jingle and all that stuff. Teach them the Word of God. Teach them, you know, teach them. Train them up. We got to train them up. The Bible said train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he won't depart. We all have been trained up. We've all strayed away along the way. But praise God. Yes, train them up. Yes, God. God is always with his people, even in frightening and confusing times when they do not sense his presence. And sometimes you feel like the Lord, you say, Lord, where are you? I'm, I'm out here. Lord, where, where are you? I, I've been calling on you. And sometimes he just say, you just need to wait. You just need to wait. You just need to wait. But we want to get in a hurry. We don't want to wait on God. Praise God. When we approach our holy God through faith in Christ, never in our own righteousness. Because sometimes we get we get too righteous for us. <laughs> Praise God. We, we, we get too righteous, you know, and we got to come on back down. Come on back down. Mm -hmm. Believers should draw closer to God in time and testing uh, in the decisions. And we should never, when things start to uh, uh, get a little weary or go straight, we should never withdraw. We should never withdraw. Stay close, uh, you know, to people that will encourage you, the saints of God. Um, stay close to the word of God. Uh, and let that be your leaning post through hard times or whatever times that you're going through, especially in times like this. Uh, you know, people are, are committing suicide. People are, are uh, doing things that you don't know what somebody is going through. And a lot of times we will ask somebody, how are you doing? But we don't hang around just for them to tell us. We say, how are you doing? And we, we pass it on by. But sometimes it just say, how are you doing? You know, and let them expound on. Sometimes we just need to listen. Uh, listen and, and lift up. And, and sometimes God is in tuning us to that ear. Sometimes we just need to hear and not to be so quick to speak. Mm -hmm. Just to listen. To what someone is saying, or to, or, or you know, God help give us a discerning of spirits uh, to know some things. And again, it ain't for everybody to know. And like He had, was commissioning 
uh, he had left the elders in charge there for them to do the instruction, and then he was giving Joshua instructions to do other things. So everybody has a purpose. Everybody, the Lord has something for everybody to do, but we just need not to get ahead um, and go back to being obedient, being holy. Uh, people and I pray that something was said this morning that mm -hmm. has been encouraging and uplifting and and just tune in and again stay encouraged stay encouraged uh, and seek the Lord in everything that you do mm -hmm. if you don't know him desire to have a closer walk with him mm -hmm. he is he is here and and God is real mm -hmm. he is real mm -hmm. and the thing going on in this world is real but we're not of this world mm -hmm. We're not of this world in a spiritual sense. As Christians, we know we know who Christ is, and we invite you in. And again, I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for joining with us this morning. I pray that something is said that you're encouraged um, from us here at Canaan. And we give God glory. Mm -hmm. And here at Canaan, we are the church that everybody is somebody, but Christ is all. Amen. And we, give, we give honor and glory to our bishop. Uh, and to our superintendent, to all the ministers that's here again, and we thank uh, Brother Golden for again uh, for being so faithful. And we're going to close out with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. Father God, we give you worship. We give you. We say hallelujah to your name, Lord God. But truly, Lord God, if it wasn't for you, Lord God, we wouldn't know where we would be, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, and pray that something that was said, Lord, to uplift, Lord, and encourage, Lord God. Father God, it's all about you and not about us. We thank you, Lord God, for your word, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we know that, Lord, that you're coming back and you're coming back for a righteous church, Lord God. Father God, through this pandemic and everything that's going on, Lord God, through the voting, the elections, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that your will be done, Lord God. Your will, not ours, Lord God. Father God, your will be done in everything that we do, everything that we say, Lord, that you get the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.